last year that uh, when we had the sutra study uh, retreat, uh, some people actually I could not complete the uh, Mahasatipatthana Sutta, even though it was five day retreat, I could not finish explaining all the aspects of the Mahasatipatthana Sutta. And therefore people ask me to continue that. And therefore last week I spoke on the kind of feelings. Uh, originally there were nine types of feelings, but uh, when we explain, when we expand it, we find 36 kind of feelings. And similarly today, we are going to speak on uh, uh, what you call uh, chitta anupassana, mindfulness of the mind, mindfulness of the mind. Mindfulness of the mind is explained in uh, 16 ways. 16 ways. And we try to understand this. Now, you all know we cannot know the mind in itself. We can know the mind through its mental contents. When the mental contents arises, we can notice the mind. Because although it works always in every instant, it is impossible for us to know the mind. But when certain mental state colored the mind, then we can at least see the color. And that is where we can see the mind. For instance, the Sutta says in Pali, uh, Saragangva Chittang, Saragangva Vajanati. That is when the mind is uh, with Greed, we know that the mind is greedy. When the mind is free from greed, then we know that the mind is not greedy. That much we can know. When the mind is greedy, we know. And greedy mind, uh, sometimes can arise with pleasure, greed arise, sometimes without pleasure, greed arise. Uh, sometimes with uh, wrong views, greed can arise, sometimes thought without uh, without uh, uh, wrong, without wrong view, greed can arise. Uh, sometimes uh, with a uh, conimous state, greed can arise. Sometimes without a conimous state, greed can arise. So there are various ways of greed arising in the mind. As soon as we as we remain mindful, we are, not, we are now talking about the mindfulness uh, meditation. In mindfulness, per, mindful person can know all these various stages of the mind with greed, various type of greed. 
And when there are, are no such uh, mental states, then the person knows that the mind is free from free from greed. The mind is not free from greed does not mean the one has attained enlightenment. No, no. This is uh, a training uh, period. And therefore, in all these instances that we uh, talk on mindfulness of the mind, we always remember we are training ourselves to attain liberation and therefore don't get confused that when you don't have greed that you are enlightened. It's, uh, it's far from that. Then that is uh, one pair out of 16 stages, these are the two stages, one with, with greed, one without greed. You remember your mind is always not full of greed, and you know that the mind is not full of greed. Only when greed arises, you know that greed is there. Okay, next pair is the mind with hatred and mind with without hatred. Uh, when anger arises, you definitely know that anger arises, and that the mind is full of anger. Mind is full of anger. When that anger is gone, you know that the mind is free from anger. For instance, when also anger is not always there. When anger arises, we become mindful of the fact that there is anger in the mind. When it is not there, when anger is not there, we know that there is no anger in you. Now, uh, it, it also doesn't mean that you have attained enlightenment when you don't have anger. But if you practice metta, you can replace anger with metta. During that time, you don't have anger. During the time you practice metta, there is no anger. Even if you don't practice metta, anger is not always there. But occasionally when your senses, sensory stimuli come together, depending on the on your previous experience with the object, person, places, food, sight, sound, smell, and so forth, according to your previous experiences, anger can arise. If not, anger does not arise. But there is always possibility of arising anger. Okay, that is the, then these are the four states out of 16. Then, Confusion. As we know, we first talk about the first three most common unwholesome men roots. What are the unwholesome roots? Greed, hatred, and delusion. Wholesome root is non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion. So the roots are there. The roots are there. The, when they are active, we know that 
that particular mental state is there. Now, then the, the third pair, or five and six, is uh, confusion. Now, delusion, we use the word delusion. Delusion, friends, in Western psychology, delusion is something, uh, it's a sickness. So you need a lot of uh, medical attention. But in the Buddha's teaching, delusion is ignorance. Even though I have mentioned it many times, even though we may have many, many university degrees, many experiences in life, so long as we have not realized the Four Noble Truth, we are ignorant. We are ignorant. Only those who, are, who have realized the Four Noble Truth are free from ignorance. And delusion comes from that ignorance. This sometimes uh, our mind is uh, distorted. Uh, and we call it at that time, my, we have distorted perception. Distorted perception. Mind gets distorted because of the uh, delusion or ignorance. And therefore, when the mind gets deluded, uh, we know that ignorance is there or delusion is there. When the mind is free from that, we know mind is clear. Our mindfulness is building, developing, and things are clear in our mind. Dharma becomes clear. So that is then uh, five of the sixteen. Fifth stage is the mind without greed, without confusion, mind with confusion. Let us assume that mind is not confused. So we know that at that time that mind is not confused, mind is clear. And for due to various circumstance, uh, circumstantial factors, mind can become deluded. Then we immediately realize, oh, my mind is confused, not clear. So these are the sixth stage. The mind without greed, without delusion, and why mind with delusion. And then there are two other states. That is, uh, in Pali called Sankirtan Chittang. Sankirtan Chintan Tapajanati. Sankirtan Sankirta is translated into English as uh, shrunken mind. Shrunken mind. Vikitang is distracted mind. Sankita or contracted mind means the mind full of mind is uh, dominated by uh, sleepiness and drowsiness. When the mind is sleepy and drowsy, that mind is called Sankita withdrawn mind or uh, mind that is contracted. So the contracted mind doesn't mean very much, but when we know when we know the hindrances, one hindrance is sleepiness and drowsiness. This is very common hindrance. Of course we will talk about them later on under mindfulness of Dhamma. But in this mindfulness of the mind, when the mind is full of sleepiness and drowsiness, then 
we call it a contracted mind or a sankit sankit means contracted and there is another state which is not contracted that is called vikitta vikitta scattered mind the scattered mind is called in pali uh, uddhach kukuch as a hindrance uddhach kukuch is always very busy mind uh, it goes from object to object always uh, something is happening and that is called uh, restlessness just the opposite of sleepiness and drowsiness is called restlessness and remorse or restlessness and worry when we take care of uh, sleepiness and drowsiness mind swing to the other extreme from one side to the other and therefore that is the uh, eighth stage seven is sankita contract and mind eight is vikitta scattered mind or mind full of restlessness and worry okay next is mahagata namagata these two states also are a little confusing for many people that is uh, uh, mind sometimes translated going to greatness and not going to grandness this also as i mentioned is not very clear this simply means uh, uh, the uh the mind mahagata is the mind that has gain uh the form jana o and form formless jana not form jana formless formless jnana, that is akasana chaitana vinyana chaitana akinchanya chaitana nevasanya chaitana plus first jnana second jnana third jnana fourth jnana when you want to attain this eight concentrated state jnanic attainment that is called mahagata mahagata going to greatness still the person is not enlightened but the mind gains uh, that kind of uh, mental state so anybody can can notice that then the opposite of that is amahagata before the attainment of that state one knows very clearly that the mind has not attained any of this uh, attainment the great attainment that is called a mahagata that is the 10th uh, state then sa uttara and anuttara sa uttara and anuttara again uh actually sa uttara is anuttara again uh attain the uh form jnana and formless jnana uh in that case sa uttara means attaining uh form jnana anuttara is attaining formless jnana 
That means you can see there are two kinds of jhanas. One is, uh, you remember, uh, number one, two, three, four, are called form jhana, true power true power And from there, that, that stays called uh, a state that the mind is not attain uh, the greatest state in the jhanic attainment. And the other is anuttara, uh, the person has gained the formless jhana. That means there are no jhana beyond that, higher than that. Formless jhana is, is the in mundane attainment, formless jhana is the highest. And still don't confuse attaining any of these jhanas is the attainment of full enlightenment. Some people confuse attaining jhana means either attaining stream entry, one's return, and so forth. Attaining jhanas doesn't mean that you have attained supramundane states or sotapanna, sakadagami, and so forth. Because attaining jhana is all mundane. Uh, you all remember even the, uh, the Buddha's uh, previous teachers, um, Alara Kalama, Uddha Karamputta, and the ascetic Asita, all these uh, uh, monastic mendicants had attained jhanas, mundane and uh, mundane jhanas. And they are not enlightened. So jhana is something mundane, not supramundane. Of course, you can attain supramundane jhanas after attainment of supramundane mental state, sotaparna, sakadagyam, and so forth. Or you attain mundane jhanas and practice uh, sotaparna and so forth, then you can attain again jhanas. That time that jhana is supramundane. Otherwise, the jhanas are always mundane. So, that is uh, anuttara. Then there is uh, the 13 and 14 is called samahita, asamahita. Samahita means concentrated. Asamahita means unconcentrated. Samahita, mean, samahita means uh, uh, there are two kinds of samahita, a concentration. One is called excess concentration and other is absorption concentration. Excess concentration is called upachara samadhi. Absorption concentration is called in Pali, Appana Samadhi, Appana Samadhi. So somebody who has not attained either excess concentration or absor ab absorption concentration, the person knows that the person has not attained uh, excess concentration or absorption concentration. How does one know that one has not attained excess concentration? Excess concentration is the concentration just before attaining absorption concentration. Sometimes it is called neighborhood concentration. That means you are very close to absorption concentration, but even that is uh, uh, powerful enough for one to develop insight. Even excess concentration is powerful enough to see impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and selflessness. But still, the person has not attained full absorbed concentration. Full concentration is called 
absorption concentration of prana samadhi. So when you develop your mind, look at your mind, pay attention to the mind, you will see this distinction between access concentration and absorption concentration. If you have not attained these states, you know for sure that you have not attained it. It is very simple. This is simply watching your own mental state. That is uh, for 13 and 14. 15 and 16 are Vimutta, avimutta, mind is liberated and uh, not liberated. Now this vimutta, avimutta is, uh, uh, vimutta liberated means liberated or it's uh, a temporary thing. It's still not at an enlightenment. Even the vimutta here, the liberation here, is not full liberation, but it is called uh, tadanga and uh, uh, vikambana. Tadanga vikambana. Tadanga means uh, you develop one state of mind to overcome another. That is called anga means limb. Tad anga means that limb, limb which overcomes another limb, another mental factor. That's called vikamana. Suppression. Suppression. You suppress them by using certain mental factors and suppress other mental factors. For instance, you develop a uh, appreciative joy to overcome jealous, jealousy. You can overcome jealousy by practicing appreciative joy. You can overcome your greed by practicing generosity. You can overcome your hatred by practicing metta. L like that, you can overcome certain mental state by using some other mental state temporarily. That's called tadanga vimutti. Tadanga vimutti. And there is another state of uh, suppression. It is called uh, uh, vikambana. Vikambana is Suppose there is a, a marshy lake full of uh, uh, what you call seaweed uh, on the surface of the lake. Uh, water is not clear. You take a pot and press the, the water with your pot and so that all marsh will give away and water, clear water remain and you can take it, take clear water. As long as you keep pressing that pot, so long as you hold it, then this uh, mass will no longer be there. The moment you take it out, everything will come and cover the space. The CV, the mass, or whatever, most, more, uh, and covers it, is, covers the water. And therefore, so long as you are in uh, jhanas, you can suppress certain mental states. As soon as you come out of it, all the mental states will rush back to the mind. That kind of practice is called, it's called vimutta avimutta. Vimutta means liberated. 
liberated temporarily, liberated by overcoming certain mental factors, and liberated as long as you are in the jhanas, as soon as you come out of it, all of them come back. And therefore, even that is not full liberation. Vimutta, vimutta. When we think of uh, mindfulness of the mind, we must remember them. And so, once you have mastered this part, then it's, that is called iti ajyattangva chitte chittana pasiviradi bhaiddhavaj. You see, your own mental state and similarly, you can see others' mental state exactly as it is because if others talk to you, behave in a certain way through their words, their behavior, you can guess their mental state. Or when you are quite familiar with yours, you know that this exactly happens to others like it happens to me. This is how it happens. I followed certain steps and I gained certain state, mental state. If others follow the same steps, those people also will attain the same state. This is called Bhait Dhava. And you periodically watch your mind and periodically think of others. And then you understand, just like in previous mental states, mindfulness practice, uh, rising phenomena of this mental state, passing phenomena of this mental state, and rising and falling phenomena. Samudaya Dhamma, Vaya Dhamma, Samudaya Vaya Dhamma. A rising phenomenon, passing phenomenon, and rising and passing phenomenon. I want to repeat this phrase again. When you say that something is rising and falling, why do you want to repeat it again, rising and falling? That is because that is the nature of sankara, mental states, these various mental states also sankara. They arise and uh, pass away, but while uh, arising and passing away, there is a state which is uh, altering state. Uh, it is it is called uh, in, in Pali. Uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, rising and falling in Pali is called Tini Mani Bhikkhu Sankara Sankata Lakkanani Kata Mani Tini Uppado Panyati Vayo Panyati Sita Sanya Santa altering in between rising and falling there is an altering state this happens is uh, uh, this, uh, what you call in uh, uh, evolu e evolving and coming to peak, and then the peak is not static, not fixed. These mental states are always in a state of flux, and this state of flux also you can see very clearly. Uh, and that is why Buddha repeated this, be mindful of rising, be mindful of falling, be mindful of rising, falling in between. And that happens to everything. And also be mindful of the fact that Buddha mentioned in the discourse, I mentioned it, he mentioned it 21 times. Again, I want to mention here. Uh, this is the uh, 
this 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 means uh, this mind exists for me to gain insight. Ati chittanti vapana sati pachu pachu tavi yavadeva jnana mattaya pati sati mattaya anisito chivarati. This mind, mental state arise for me to gain vision, knowledge, insight, but not to cling to. Because in certain mental states are very pleasing, pleasant. When the pleasing mental state arises, the mindful meditator does not cling to it. Because even that pleasant state is not something permanent. If one tried to cling to something impermanent, one would end up in suffering. And therefore, Atti Chittanti Vapana Sati Pachi Pachi Tavoti Yavadeva Jnana Mata Pati Sita Mata Anis Sita Ocha Viharati Nati Kinchu Loke Upadhyay So it does, the person does not hold on to anything and let it go. And let it go is the very important training in mindfulness practice. Friends, I think this much is enough for today, for our Dhamma talk. I think we uh, end this session with our metta practice. Okay, we don't have much time for that. And we try to uh, read uh, Okay. Okay. Now let us, we have all about uh, 25 minutes and let us try to uh, Listen to this uh, metta recital. After that, I we all start meditating. Okay. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long or large, medium short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth. May all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anywhere, anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so, towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate a world, a world, a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment. Whether standing, Walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes near again to birth in the womb. With this metta thought, friends, let us meditate together at least for 20 minutes.
by means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be, from the highest realm of existence to the lowest, May all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. As we mentioned, friends, there are all beings with form and without form, in all realms of existence, they all are in samsara, and we want to wish all of them to be peaceful and happy, especially those who are in hospitals suffering from various diseases. May they recover very soon and find time to practice Dhamma meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering and never to fall ill again. All the doctors and nurses who take care of these people, hospital staffs and so on, may they all find time to practice Dhamma meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones may find time to understand the Dhamma, the nature of life, and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering through the practice of Dhamma meditation. And all those who are in the northern direction, northeastern direction, eastern direction, Southeastern direction, southern direction, southwestern direction, western direction, northwestern direction, above us, below us, all of them be well, happy, and peaceful. May they all attain liberation from samsaric suffering. Let us have this very earnest wish in our mind and we thereby gain more marriage and more peace and happiness. Even though the number is smaller than today, I'm glad that you came to attend this session and I hope you continue your practice. Okay, friends, see you next week. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you very much, Bhante. Thank you, 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 Bhante.